this tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to define what a radian is. And once we know what a radian is, we are going to take angles given in degrees and convert them into radians. And we're also going to take angles given in radians and convert them back into degrees. Well, what exactly is a radian? A radian really is just an angle measure, but it's a very specific angle. And the angle is formed by taking the length of the circle's radius and marking that same length off on the arc of the circle. And the angle that is created by that arc is considered one radian. So basically what we're saying is the length of the arc marked off on the circle should be equal to the circle's radius. The angle measure of one radian in degrees is approximately equal to 57.2958 rounded to the nearest ten thousandths place. Now, what if we wanted to figure out how many radians it would take to form half of a circle? Well, we know in one half of a circle, that is equal to 180 degrees. So if we divide it by 57.2958, that would give us how many radians would fit inside half of a circle. And when we divide those two values together, we get a value of pi. So you see here, we could fit in one radian, two radians, three radians, and a little bit more than three radians to form half a circle. That little sliver remaining is 0.14 or 14 hundredths of a radian. And that's why we can say in radians that half of a circle or 180 degrees is equal to 1 pi in radians. So that leads us to the question, how many radians would form a whole circle? Well, if half of a circle is equal to 1 pi, then certainly 2 halves of a circle must equal 2 pi. So 180 degrees plus 180 degrees forms a full circle, or 360 degrees. So we would add pi plus pi, which is 2 pi. So in terms of pi, the number of radians that would form a full circle is 2 pi. Now let's say we just wanted to know the number of radians as a decimal. We could just substitute 3.14 in for pi and multiply that by 2, which would be approximately equal to 6.28 radians. Now, if you look at the screen, we can clearly see that we can fit six whole radians into an entire circle, and we also have part of a radian left over, which is approximately equal to 28 hundredths of a radian. Now, another thing that's useful to know is how many radians does it take to form a quarter of a circle? Well, we already know that half of a circle is equal to pi in terms of radians, and a quarter of a circle is exactly half of a half. Now, we can clearly see that the green part that is shaded represents half of a circle, which is equal to pi. Now, the yellow section represents one quarter of the circle, or 90 degrees of the circle, and that is exactly half of what the green portion was. Well, if the green portion is equal to pi, then the yellow section, which is a quarter, must be equal to pi divided by 2. So, if you were to convert 90 degrees into radians, expressed as pi, that would be pi divided by 2. Now let's say you wanted to convert 90 degrees to radians, but you wanted to express that as a decimal. Well, we know that that is going to be equal to pi over 2, so you can simply substitute pi with 3.14 and then divide that by 2, which is approximately equal to 1.57 radians. And then notice, if you took each one of those two quarters and added them back together, you would have half of your circle back. Now, if each quarter of a circle is equal to pi divided by 2, that means if we were to add the two quarter circles together, or pi over 2 plus pi over 2, which is the same thing as 1 half pi plus 1 half pi, we would get one whole pi once again. So we should memorize that half of a circle will always be equal to 1 pi, and a quarter of a circle is 1 half pi or pi over 2, and a whole circle is going to be equal to 2 pi. Now we just went over a few basics about radians and what some of the basic angles are equal to. Now let's get into some more specific problems. Let's say you are given any angle in degrees and you had to convert that into radians. Well, what you would do is you would take those degrees and you would multiply by pi and then divide by 180. So let's go ahead and do the three examples shown on the screen. To convert 120 degrees to radians, we take 120 and we multiply by pi. And we take that result and we divide by 180. Now to express our answer in terms of pi, what we do is we take the fraction 120 over 180 and just simplify that fraction. And both of these numbers are divisible by 60. 
60 goes into 120 twice, and 60 goes into 180 three times. So that fraction can be reduced to two thirds, and we just take our pi over here and we just rewrite it with our numerator. So in terms of pi, the answer in radians is 2 pi over 3. Now let's say we wanted to express our answer as a decimal. What we would do is we would take 2 times pi as a decimal, which would be 3.14, and we take that result and we divide that by 3. And 2 times 3.14 is 6.28, and then we take 6.28 and divide that by 3, and that is going to be approximately equal to 2.09 if we rounded it to the nearest hundredths place. So a 120 degree angle is approximately equal to two radians, and remember, a radian is a little bit over 57 degrees, which is close to 60, and two groups of 60 is 120. So this answer right here would make sense. All right, let's go ahead and convert 30 degrees into radians. So once again, we're going to take the angle in question, in this case 30 degrees, and multiply that by pi, and then write that over 180. Next, we have to take 30 over 180 and simplify that. Well, we can cross out these zeros here, and then we can take 3 over 18 and reduce that to 1 over 6. So our answer in radians expressed in terms of pi is 1 pi over 6. However, we have to write that as pi over 6. Remember in algebra, if your coefficient is 1, we generally just do not write 1 as a coefficient. So we just write pi over 6. Now, another thing that we could have noticed about this problem is that 30 degrees is exactly one-fourth of 120 degrees. If you remember from our last example, 120 degrees in radians is equal to 2 pi over 3. Well, a 30 degree angle can be attained by taking 120 degrees and dividing that by 4, which means the answer in radians of 30 degrees is going to be one-fourth of what this is. So we could take 2 pi over 3 and divide that by 4, or multiply it by 1 fourth, since it's 1 fourth of that result. So let's go ahead and multiply that by 1 fourth, just to show we're going to still get pi over 6. Well, 2 pi times 1 is equal to 2 pi. And on the bottom, we have 3 times 4, which is 12. And 2 over 12 can be reduced to 1 over 6 pi, which of course is expressed as pi over 6. And if you wanted to express your answer as a decimal, then you would substitute pi with 3.14, and you would divide that by 6. Now we know that 3.14 is really close to 3, and we would know that 3 over 6 is 1 half. So we can already see that our answer should be very close to one half. And our answer to the nearest hundreds place would be 0 0.52. Okay, let's go ahead and convert 195 degrees into radians. So we take 195 and multiply by pi and write that over 180. And 195 over 180 can be simplified by a factor of 15. 15 can go into 195 13 times. So on the top we have 13 pi. And 180 is divisible by 15, a total of 12 times. And this is our answer expressed as pi in radians, 13 pi divided by 12. Now, if we wanted to express this as a decimal, we would just take 13 and multiply that by 3.14 and divide that result by 12.
Now, before even getting our answer, we can see that 13 over 12 is an improper fraction that's just a little bit larger than one whole, which means we're multiplying pi by a value that is a little bit larger than one, which means as a decimal, our answer should be a little bit bigger than pi. So 13 times 3.14 is equal to 40.82, and that product divided by 12 is equal to 3.40 if we round to the nearest hundreds place, or we could just say 3.4. All right, now let's do the reverse of what we've been doing. Let's take something given in radians and convert that back into degrees. All right, to convert something given in radians into degrees, the first thing that we do is we take the number of radians and multiply by 180, and then we divide that result by pi. Now, if the amount of radians is given in pi, that might be a little bit tricky, but that's okay. We can figure this out. So let's take the first example, which is 3 pi over 4, and write that down. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 3 fourths and I'm going to multiply it by pi over 1, which is the same thing as 3 times pi divided by 4. The next thing that we have to do is multiply by 180. And I'm going to write that as a fraction. So 180 over 1. And then after multiplying all this, we are supposed to divide by pi. Now remember, when you divide by any fraction, that is the same thing as multiplying by its own reciprocal. So instead of dividing by pi, we are going to multiply by 1 over pi. For example, if we write divided by pi, we'd have to write divided by pi over 1. But what we can do is we can change this to a multiplication sign and change this to 1 over pi. So we're going to erase this right here and multiply by 1 over pi. Now we're going to take advantage of cancellation a little bit. Notice we have pi up here as a numerator and a denominator, so we can just cross those both out. 180 and 4 can be reduced. 180 can be reduced to 45 by dividing that by 4, and 4 divided by itself is 1. So we're going to go ahead and multiply everything we have remaining at the top. We have 3 times 45 at the top, which is 135. And at the bottom, we just have a bunch of 1s remaining. So the denominator is 1. And 135 over 1, of course, is equal to 135 degrees. All right, let's do the next example. All right, let's take 3 pi over 2 and convert that into degrees. So we're going to start by writing 3 over 2 times pi over 1. And then we multiply that by 180. And we end up just multiplying by 1 over pi, which, remember, is the same thing as dividing by pi. Now, what should happen if you set up everything correctly is that pi is going to always cancel itself out. And now at this point, we can take 180 divided by 2, which is 90. So we can rewrite this as 90 over 1. Now we have nothing but 1s remaining for our denominators, which signals that we are done reducing anything that's possible to reduce. So at the top, all we have left is 3 times 90 which is equal to 270 degrees. All right, let's go ahead and convert 5 pi over 12 into degrees. So we're going to write 5 over 12 multiplied by pi over 1 multiplied by 180 over 1 multiplied by 1 over pi. And once again, pi is going to cancel out. Now 180 and 12 can be canceled out. They are both divisible by 12. Of course, 12 fits into itself once. And 12 fits into 180, a total of 15 times. 
So at this point, all we are left with for our numerators is 5 times 15, which is 75. So 5 pi over 12 in degrees is equal to 75. All right, now I'm going to kind of show you the shortcut or the cheat code to getting the answer really quickly. So let's take the first example we did, which was 3 pi over 4, and convert that into degrees using the shortcut. Now notice that we ended up canceling out pi every single time. Basically, what you can do to get your answer really quickly is pretend pi is not even there when your angle is given in radians in terms of pi. And then what you can do is immediately take your numerator and multiply that by 180 and then divide that by the number you have on the bottom, which in this case is 4. And we can cancel out 4 and 180. That would be 45 over 1. And then multiplying 3 by 45 would give us our answer, which is 135 degrees. But I think it's helpful to kind of learn the long way first so we can understand where the shortcut actually comes from. So taking a look at the second example, which is 3 pi divided by 2 in radians in terms of pi, once again, let's just ignore pi here and multiply our numerator by 180, and then take that and divide that by 2. And first, we can take 180 divided by 2, which is 90, so we cancel this out and write 90, and then multiply 3 by 90, which is 270 degrees. And for the third example, 5 pi over 12, we can immediately multiply 5 by 180 for the numerator and take that product and divide by 12. And 180 divided by 12 is 15, so we can cancel these two values out and just write 15 at the top and then take 5 and multiply that by 15 to get a product of 75 degrees. All right, so I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit better what a radian is and also how to convert radians to degrees and angles given in degrees into radians. Hey, I just want to say thanks very much for checking out my math video. Please subscribe to my channel so when I upload new math videos, you can become informed as they become available.